figured I'd give him a second because uh, it was uh, not the race it usually is. Yeah, taking a sweet, sweet time. Yeah, he was. Oh, man, <laughs> just just trying just to waltzing get... on him. <laughs> <right? laughs> yeah. All the time. In the world. Hey, All the time. <laughs> you know, just trying to, you know, I'm feeling pretty today. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, everybody, how's it going? So today, um, we're going to be talking a little bit about what we do uh, with Dante in our studio for uh, for our audio solution. Um, if you don't know what Dante is, it's a product by Audinate um, that handles uh, audio over IP. Uh, we do a lot of the um, sort of bringing in of audio in and out of our system uh, in our MCR and in the field. Using Dante, we rely on it very heavily. Um, right now, you're hearing me through Dante. We have a, a Dropbox, a DT168, which is a uh, Allen & Heath product. It's 16 in, 8 out. Um, so I have this broadcast headset plugged in. I have a mic plugged into one of the preamps on um, on that box. That's being controlled by the actual the XQ over Dante. And then I have a return so I can listen back to myself and everybody else in the studio um, through another port uh, using this um, JK Remote amp. Um, so, with that being said, uh, we have the 168 that's down there, and the heart of everything is uh, this sort of net, uh, this network switch, and this is sort of peripheral uh, piece of gear. Um, so I have a one line tied into my network switch, and what's great about that is I can have sort of a star configuration, or I have one network line run uh, from my main primary switch over to here in the studio, and then I can add all these different products along with that. Um, not, um, including but not limited to this Dante Avio uh, two-channel USB in and out, um, which is a product that Audinate makes. They also have like a um, uh, not only a USB uh, to to interface your computer over Dante. They also have like XLR breakouts, um, things of that nature, quarter inch. Um, there's a tons of different flavors that they make. Um, themselves along with Dante Virtual Sound Card, which is what we use in the studio to play back music uh, using a software called Trigger. Um, along with that, I have another ethernet line here that's using um, the, uh, that I'm using to connect to the um, primary network um, to do uh, some Dante controller um, sort of reconfiguration. Um, I don't know if you can see this here, but in there we also have a, yeah, there we go. Um, you can sort of see everything that's going on in here. So I have all my transmission from all the different things. Yes, we do have an Xbox that's tied to our uh, Dante network. Um, so if you've ever seen our Madden previews, that's how we get that. We ingest that audio um, along with a series of different sort of um, different devices that we have in our network. Um, you can monitor primary and secondary sort of feeds. Um, everything right now is running off a of primary feed, um, but then we could set up a uh, redundancy so if there's a failover with one of the switches, it'll automatically switch everything over and your, your show will be seamless. Um, uh, and every, how you're hearing everybody in the studio actually is through uh, ClearCom. So we have this great ClearCom eDante card that's in our matrix frame. It's a fantastic way to interface uh, audio in and out so we can make mix minuses for everybody and have, um, and have sort of interfacing with IFBs over, over Dante. Um, a whole host of different other things. Um, sort of moving down the line as well, you can add, say you're not nearby this big old DT168, which is sort of this drop down like trunk type thing. Um, if you just need to drop, uh, if you have connection to your Dante network, um, say a port on a patch panel or something like that, and you can drop one of these down and you can have um, a, mic pre, a mic pre, two channels actually, um, fully controllable locally or, or, or even over the Dante network. Um, with phantom power and all your gain settings and whatnot. And would you look at that? I think I'm running out of time because we actually have a little um, flasher light indication, which is this is a little complicated how we get it done, but it's a it's a cool little box and everything is very, very elegant. You know, I can run a whole show without needing to um, run a whole lot of XLR and have a whole bunch of lines. I can get, you know, I can get like hundreds of channels of audio uh, all running through a network switch in redundancy. So I'll be totally set to go. Um, that's pretty much the general overlook of what Dante is for our studio. Um, do you guys in the studio have any questions for me about this? Yeah. I think, oh, sorry, go ahead, Josh. 
Oh yeah. Um, so if I wanted to learn more about Dante stuff, um, would, are there any like classes or anything I'd be able to take to um, learn like all the intricacies of it? Absolutely. Um, I learned Dante um, through Audinate's website. Uh, they offer a level one course, which is really kind of starts with the fundamentals of of what audio um, sort of does in the digital realm and how Dante sort of goes into that. Um, that's a free course. It takes about an hour, and you get a quiz, and then you get a little. PDF that says you've been certified. Um, and then they also offer a level two uh, course on their website and a level three, which goes into more details with regards to like networking and how all that kind of stuff works. Um, very, very handy tools uh, to use. And you have this very elegant solution for audio over IP. Um, very easy to sort of get your hands wet with. Um, and they have a whole lot of resources on the website as to how to use it to its greatest potential. Yeah, I was going to say, I know it's intimidating, but as somebody like, so I used to run monitors for a band and we would load into the same venue over and over and over again. And like audio over IP will change your life when you're loading into a humongous venue, the amount of the reduction in cable that you need, the amount of work that you need to do, the amount of like moving around and patching things. It's a, it's a game changer. Yeah, that's for sure. I think you have to have a little bit more of a mindset about like that next level of like troubleshooting that you have to go through. It's not like, is this cable bad or not? Is It's like, is my patch correct? Um, so it's a little bit of a different paradigm with regards to like how you fax the issues that you might run into, um, you know, on a normal show. Yeah, totally. Uh, but it definitely does make for a more efficient uh, look and sort of layout of your workflow for audio in big and small. Um, sort of situations.